being praised. Is somebody hearing me? We all were enjoying these praises. Although we were not the ones that were being praised. So you just imagine how God feels. The one that we are praising. Just imagine how he feels. That is what he loves most. God goes off when our praises goes up. I heard somebody say something the other day that I believe was so powerful. He said, Daniel, the holy man of God, he prayed and fasted for 21 days, asking God for blessing. And the angels that were bringing answers were apprehended in the heavens. The angels were apprehended in heaven, in the heavenlies, until Archangel Michael was released. To intercept the prince of Persia. But when we praise God and we worship him. He himself. He comes down. Which prince? Which principality? Which demon? Which power can stop the king of kings? And the lord of lords? So your prayer can be messed up. Your prayer can be hindered. But your praise. <laughs> Is somebody hearing me? Your praise cannot be stopped by no devil. Because when you begin to praise, he does not assign his angels to move. When you begin to praise and you worship him, he himself, he moves. and Silas found themselves in prison. The Bible says whilst they were in the inner cells, they prayed. And they prayed. And they prayed. And nobody knows what was going on. Nobody knows the kind of negotiation that was going on in the realm of the spirit. And they kept praying. And they kept praying. And they kept praying. And the Bible says at some point in time that they started singing. They started singing. When they started singing, the story changed. The Bible says they sang and all the image, everybody in the prison had them. I'm sure some people will say that, what is wrong with these Jewish boys? Are they crazy? Which God? Which God? If your God was alive, if your God was that powerful, why did he allow you to be in prison like this? Tell somebody, don't worry, don't worry. about your circumstance and about your situation. God, say God, say God is about to turn everything around. God will surely give you a testimony. They started singing and they sang and they sang and they sang. The Bible says that and there was an earthquake. <laughs> there was what? The earth trembled when God landed. I said what? The earth did what? When God landed. And when God landed. Prison doors. The earth quaked. The prison doors opened. Chains were broken. There was liberty when God landed. I see God landing in your home. He is landing in your home. He is landing in your marriage. Landing in the areas of your finances. God. Somebody say my God. Has landed. You see. The very wonderful things. That God. Has put in place. For our salvation. For our greatness. And for our blessing scares the devil to death. And so the strategy that the devil uses is to cause us not to be excited about those things. 
everything that the enemy is threatened of, he causes us not to want it. Number one, when we pray, we move mountains. He's scared of the prayer of the righteous. So he causes believers not to like to pray. We don't like praying. You say cook out, everybody will show up. And they will bring somebody. Because king stomach is always in demand. You say prayer. Somebody said the devil is a liar. Everything that threatens the devil, he tries to manipulate believers not to have interest in it. Prayer. You say, hmm. Giving. Hmm. Praise. Hmm. Fasting. Hmm. Soul winning. Hmm. And it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. Somebody say the devil is a liar. Yeah, is oh, I forgot one. Titan. Yeah. Powerful. Go study about all these things that I just did mention of. They are the keys. The keys of the kingdom. So begin to love them. I said what? You cannot love what Satan loves and hate what God loves. We must love what God loves and hate what Satan loves. Praise God. So today, we are preaching. I'm talking on a subject which I entitled Praises Does Wonders. He said, declare this month as our month of praise and worship. Which of course, to some is not a big deal. But to some also, it's a big deal. Because when they say pray, you don't like it. You don't like it because maybe you don't know how to pray. But when they say praise, you must know how to praise. You can sing all the worldly songs. You sing them. That is what some people listen to. You just call anybody out there's music. They will sing all. They know the lyrics. When we sing those songs, we are praising the devil. So God says, tell my people that this, this month should be a month of praises. Somebody say, a month of praises. And praises does wonders. And I'm going to prove it to you. Everything that God says... Everything that God has written in his book is true. And everything that he has written about you and I is also true. Our first scripture this morning will be Psalm 47. Psalm 47. I will be teaching so that people will have great understanding. Psalm 47 Verse 7. The Bible says, For God is the king of all the earth. Somebody say, God. God. He is the king of all the earth. Then he said, Sing praises with understanding. Sing praises with what? Understanding. Understanding. Somebody say, I will, I will sing praises always, always. With, understanding. with understanding. So it simply means that you can sing praises without understanding. You can sing praises without understanding. When we praise, we are praising the king of all the earth. When we praise, we are not praising man. We are praising God. We are praising Jesus. But he said, when you do praise, when you sing praises, do it with understanding. Because when you don't do it with understanding, you may not receive results. Verse 
when you are praising God, you must see yourself as one who is in prayer. When you are praising God, you must see yourself as one who is focused. As one who is determined. As one who is negotiating. See, a lot of times when you're on the phone and somebody's talking to you, you tell the person, I'm on the phone, I'm on the phone, I'm on the phone. Wait, wait, I'm on the phone. Right? Right? You don't want interference. When you have a better understanding of praise and worship, you don't allow anything to interrupt what you're doing. I love you, Lord. Then you pick your phone. I love you, Lord. Are you chewing gum a little bit? What are you doing? What are you doing? You can't do that. You can't do that. Whenever you are praising, you are negotiating. When you find yourself in a situation that is not pleasant, that is not the time you want to check your phone. That is the time you want to lock in negotiating seriously with God. Because prayer works. But praise is also works more powerful than your prayer. Because some prayers God did not answer and he does not intend to answer. He does not intend to answer. If he had wanted to answer, he could have answered a long time ago. So now we are talking about praises. You see, when somebody comes around you right now and begins to praise you and begin to praise you and they ask you for something, if you're not careful, that is what we call in the world conning. It's conning you. Oh, man, you look so beautiful. I said, thank you. Wow, where did you get this from? Wow. I'm sure you bought this about $4,000. Maybe you just bought it $20. He said, thank you. You're feeling good, right? Whenever you feel good, most of the time you lose God. When we begin to worship God, God just gets off. He said, I'm going there. I'm going down. Why? Because he loves worship. He loves praises. He loves thanksgiving. But what I'm saying this morning is, it must be done with understanding. Somebody say understanding. understanding. Let's look at Psalm 100. Psalm 100 verse 4. He said, enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Wake up in the morning. Don't just get up and say that, God, I need this. God, I need that. God, I need this. Somebody say understanding. When you have a better understanding of praising God or of praises, the first thing you want to do when you go into his presence is to thank him. You begin your praises by thanking God for what he has done. And whilst you continue to praise him, he will begin to perform every other thing that he intends to do in your life. Amen. Just thanking God, appreciating him, let him know that you acknowledge everything that he has done for you. When you do that, the moment you do that in praises, he begins to do every other thing that he needs to do. You see, a lot of times we go to God to ask God for stuff. But it is better for you to praise him than to ask him for stuff. Because you are limited when it comes to asking God for stuff. He said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has in stock. The things that God intends. The things that God has prepared. The things that God has predestined for your life. You have no idea. So the fact that you went to ask God to give you some money and you haven't received the money doesn't mean that's the end of the world. God has better plans for you. And bigger plans for you. Somebody say hallelujah. 
enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with what? Praise. So you begin to thank him and then you enter. You begin to praise him. He said, be thankful to him and bless his name. Somebody say, I'll be thankful. Say it one more time. Say it again. When you begin to thank God, God cannot just sit down. God moves. When you begin to praise him, God moves. Somebody say, I see God. Say, I see God moving on my behalf. Say, I see it. You see, you see what you see is what you get. It is spiritual. It's supernatural. You must begin to see. Somebody say, I'm seeing. Say, I am seeing. Say, I am seeing the blessing of the Lord that make it rich without sorrow. In the book of Exodus chapter 15, I'm building my foundation. Exodus chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. Exodus 15, verse 1 and 2. Hear what the Bible says. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke saying, I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Now these people have been in captivity. They have been in slavery for over 430 years. They had no power to set themselves free. They had no power to come out of that situation. Am I talking to somebody this morning? They found themselves in the strong hands of Egypt. In the strong hands of Pharaoh. They had no power to get themselves out. But God showed up when they praised him. When they sang his song. They said, Moses and the children of Israel, they did what? They cried and complained. Let me tell you something. When they cried and they complained, though their situation was one that requires crying and complaining, see, a lot of times we find ourselves in a situation that we think the best thing we have to do is to complain or cry. But when they cried and they complained, God killed them. When they praised him, God moved on their behalf. Choose one. Will you choose complaining or praises? But you know that most of the time we do, we do better with complaining. I told you that we must begin to hate what God hates and love what God loves. And begin to hate what Satan loves. Satan knows that as long as he can get you to complain and grumble, God will turn his back to you. God will be upset with you. Somebody say, I refuse to complain. Say, I cannot complain. Praise God. The Holy Ghost is moving. Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke saying, I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into what? The sea. Verse 2. Then he said, The Lord is my strength. And my song. And he has become my salvation. He is my God. And I will praise him. My father's God. And I will exalt him. When Moses looked at the things that God has done. When he looked. And the miracles and the testimonies that they have this time around. He realized that that was not the time to cry. That was not the time to complain. Because when you acknowledge God, you move God to do certain things that you yourself, you don't have a clue. Praise is to thank him for what he has done. And for what he's about to do. Praise is celebrating and appreciating God 
When you celebrate and you appreciate God, you evoke his presence. Oh, you didn't hear me. What did I say? In verse 11, let's skip to verse 11. Verse 11, listen, listen to what he said. He said, who is like you? When they praised him and they thanked him and they worshipped him and they celebrated him, he showed up in a mighty way and now they said, who is like you, O oh Lord? Among the gods. People have gods. There are so many gods. He said, among the gods, who is like you? You are glorious in holiness. Somebody say holiness. holiness. Say holiness. holiness. Today in the churches, they don't preach holiness anymore. Holiness is what God loves. Holiness is what Satan hates. And so Satan has succeeded by causing people, pastors, not to even talk about holiness because a lot of the pastors themselves, they are messed up. If you have messed up, how do you talk about holiness? When you are not leading a holy life, where are you going to get confidence from to talk about holiness? So the church is okay with it. As long as pastor is not talking about holiness, it's okay. You don't know why pastor is not talking about holiness. Pastor is not talking about holiness because maybe pastor himself has become contaminated. Somebody say, I refuse. Say, I refuse to become contaminated. Say, I will not be contaminated. Say, holiness is my calling. The Bible said, who is like you, glorious in holiness. When you lead a holy life, you see his glory. Oh, what did I say? A lot of times when we talk about holiness, people's mind just goes on maybe fornication or some. There are so many little, little, little things that we do that are unholy. If you want to see his glory, study about holiness. How many holy people do you have in here? Oh, how many? Did you hear what I said? I said, how many holy people do we have in here? Ah, am I speaking Greek? Listen, now, am I on my own? I said, I know you guys are holy, but what is holding your hands back? You don't have confidence that you are holy? Now, how many of you have Holy Ghost in you? If you have Holy Ghost in you, then you are holy. Because the Holy Ghost is not going to be in you when you are unholy. Somebody say, I'm holy. I'm holy. <laughs> Glorious in holiness. Fearful in praise. God is fearful when it comes to praises. When you begin to praise him, he can do some dangerous things. The Bible says that what? Doing wonders. God does wonders whenever you begin to praise him. Now listen to this. David was the least among his brothers. So he was the one who was always taking care of the sheep out there. And the brothers were army generals and the tycoons. So they are always home, office, the military, doing negotiation. And David was at the backside of the desert. And he took care of his father's business because he was God-fearing. Because he had understanding of who God is. He knew that God is the one who promotes and God is the one who demotes. He is the one who decides who must be a king and who must be a slave or a servant. Everything is in his hands. And David decided that, you know what? I'm not going to talk to these people. What I'm going to do is to begin to praise the kingmaker. And he started praising God and worshiping God at the backside of the desert on a constant note. 
And he started building equipment, musical instruments, putting them together and praising God and praising God and thanking God for at least making him in charge of the sheep. And he worshiped God at the backside of the desert on a constant base. One day his praises hit God. And God said, I need, I need a king. I don't want Saul anymore. Saul is crazy. I don't want Saul anymore. I don't want Saul anymore. I need a king. I need a king. I need a king. I need a king. God was, God was receiving some kind of powerful praises that he couldn't sit down because he inhabits. He dwells in praise. So whenever you begin to praise him, he shows up in your praises. God says, I need a king. I need a king. I need a king. I need a king. Then he called Prophet Samuel. He said, Prophet Samuel, I have found me a king. Samuel said, who? He said, go meet with Jesse. He said, Jesse? He said, yeah. Go, go to Jesse's house. He saw Eliab. He saw all the big guys that looked like ones that were qualified <laughs> to become the king for God. But guess what? They did not know how to praise God. They did not know how to praise God. How many of us know how to praise God? You see, you, 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 must, you must know how to praise God with understanding. And so how many of us, you see, when the Bible talks about um, praising God with understanding, you see, maybe you may be under a situation. But when you begin to praise him from the under, you begin to do what? Stand. When you praise God with understanding, everything within, without, will begin to stand for you. David was at the backside of the desert. Praise God. Worship God. Didn't complain. Didn't murmur. And God was moved by his praise and worship. And God said to Samuel that Samuel, you are a dangerous prophet. But this time I want you to understand that you have missed it. Seeing that I have not chosen any of these ones. Then Samuel said, do you have any brother? He said, oh yeah, there is one at the backside. He said, we're not going to sit down until he shows up. And the guy shows up and it was David. So David have a better understanding of praising God and worshiping God. When you wake up in the morning, praise him. When you sit in your car, now remember, remember, remember that some of the music that you listen to does not add up. It takes from you. You better want to play some music that will bring you into the area or the realm of praising God. You begin to praise him. You begin to worship him. Guess what? He joins you in that car. He enters into that car and he begins to drive with you because he dwells in praise. Because what? He dwells in praise. This is a key, a master key for believers. The Bible says that he does wonders in praises. He does what? A shepherd boy praised him and he showed up, picked him up and made him a king. I see, I see God picking somebody up this morning. You are singing with understanding, singing with intention that by the time you finish praising God, God will move on your behalf. Singing with intention that as you sing, God will praise you. God will elevate you. King Jehoshaphat was confronted by a mighty army. They came to tell him that, King, we are in trouble. We are dead. He said, what? He said, a mighty nation. He said, really? He said, let's go on a fast. Let's seek the face of God. In prayer and fasting. And then the anointing came upon somebody. And the person said, Oh, king, I heard God's voice. God said, this battle is not your battle. God said, this battle. How many of you are fighting some battles? There is a way. There are things you can do that you will not have to fight that battle. God said, this battle is not your battle. This battle is my battle. This battle, you need not to fight this battle. This battle, I 
will fight it for you. He said, God, how are you going to fight this battle? God said, gather some people and let them begin to praise me. He said, what? Gather some people. Let them begin to praise me. Is that all? Somebody say, yes, that's all. Say, that's all. Hmm. Somebody say, hmm. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. We are doing damage. Damage to the kingdom of hell. Makurabashi kataya. Zitaro karima handos. 2 Chronicles 20. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 15. Are we there? Listen to what God said. And he said, listen, all of you Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, that says the Lord to you, do not be afraid, nor dismayed, because of this great multitude. God saw them as a great multitude. Then God said, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Then God said, tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of these. And you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. He said what? You will not need to fight in this battle. So God, what do you want me to do? He said, position yourselves. Somebody said, I'll position myself. Say, I'll position myself. Say, I'll position myself. So when you are facing a mighty army and you are scared and God is telling you to position yourself, it means that strategically take a stand. I'm going to show you what to do, but just position yourself and don't let anything scare you. Don't let anything move you. Don't let anything distract you because I'm about to perform wonders. Verse 17, he said, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Who is with you? Who is with you? God is with you. Somebody say, God is with me. Is with me. Verse 18. He said, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord. Doing what? Worshipping the Lord. They, they know this. They know how this thing works. Praise God. And we must understand it as well. Then the Levites of the children of the Korahites and the children of the Korahites stood up to do what? To complain? To what? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud. Somebody say loud and high. Today we have so many diplomatic singers in the church. And we are singing. There is spiritually, there is a great difference between the one who praises undertone and the one who praises loud. The children of Israel had to confront the walls of Jericho. Take wall. There is no way they could enter. And God said to them, I got you. God said the first day, go round. Second day, on the seventh day, go seven times and shout loud. Somebody say loud. When they shouted in praise and in joy, guess what? God showed up. When he showed up, the walls Tumbled. Satan has no respect for diplomatic believers. How many diplomatic believers do we have in here? Lift up your hands. We do have some here. Since the days of John the Baptist. The kingdom of God suffers violent. And the violent must take that which belongs to them by force. The guy is violently fighting you. And you are fighting back diplomatically. 
Somebody say, I repent. Say, I repent. Say, I repent. Say, I repent. When you are praying, sometimes pray dangerous prayers. Let the devil know that you mean business. Let the enemy know that you mean business. One day somebody was coming to my home, not here, back home. And the person happened to get to the back of my window and he heard me pray, praying. He went back. He didn't come. So he told me that, oh, I was coming to your place, but you were praying. I said, ah, but that doesn't mean it. He said, no, 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 the kind of prayers that you are praying, I really want to enter the house there. Amen? Is somebody being blessed? They started praising God. Listen to what the Bible says. So, verse 20, so they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Somebody say, I'll believe God. And he will establish me. Say, I'll believe God. And he will establish me. Then he said, believe his prophets and you shall prosper. I see somebody prospering. I see somebody prospering. I see somebody prospering. I see somebody prospering. He said, believe his prophets. Now you must have wisdom enough to know who is a true prophet. Is somebody hearing me? Some prophets, if you follow them, you will be messed up. And some also, this one, if you follow this one, you will prosper. So what I'm saying to you this morning is to empower you to prosper. To prosper. To prosper. Worship God. Praise him. Acknowledge him. Thank him for everything that he has done. And he will do some more. Hallelujah. Verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should do what? Sing. He appointed those who should do what? Sing to the Lord. And who should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy. And dear for us. That is all that they needed to say. They just woke up. Weak people. They were going to fight strong army. They didn't know how to fight them. And God says, get some people who know how to sing. Uh, I believe that the people who knew how to sing, when you see them, they don't have muscles. They don't have, they, they don't have macho. They don't have no six pack. They don't have ammunition. And God says, just get them to come and sing. Get them to praise me. Then they came. Praise the Lord for his mercy. Endure it forever. And what else? What else? Now when they, somebody said when they, the Bible says when they began to sing and to praise the Lord and to praise, the Lord did what? Do you see that? He didn't send angels. He didn't send angels. He himself. The Lord said, anytime you see it like that, it means that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, all of them showed up. Set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. They were defeated. I see your enemies being defeated. I see your enemies being defeated. I see your enemies being defeated. I see all your enemies being defeated through your praise. Let's move on. 23. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. Ah, so now they were fighting among themselves. There will be big confusion among your enemies. Tonight, tonight, as we meet here to praise him and to worship him, something dangerous will happen. Don't let the devil stop you from coming. He's very good in that. Amen? 
The Bible says they started killing and destroying them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So when Judah came to a place of overlooking the wilderness, they looked towards the multitude and there were their dead bodies. Who killed them? Who killed them? God killed them. How? What did they do for God to kill them? They praise God. They praise God. The same praises that they did is the same praises we are doing today. Because he is good and his mercies endure forever. There is none holy like our God who is like unto thee. They were just singing this. And God moved and said confusion, lay an ambushment and the enemies that you don't even know will be in trouble. You see, when you know the enemy, that's where you can fight and say that God killed this one or God destroyed. Most of the enemy, you don't even know. Some of them, you are eating with them. You are walking with them. You, you, you are sharing your secret with them. They are always sitting in front of your nose. And you don't know. Some of them, they are your family members. You don't know. The only person who can kick them out of your life is God. And how to move God to fight that battle for you is when you praise him. A blind man went to Jesus and said, Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus said, what do you want? Jesus knew that he is blind. Jesus knew what his prayer request was, but Jesus wanted him to be specific. So Jesus said, tell me what your problem is. And so when you go to God praying and you don't know specifically what the problem is, you, you just be praying. But when you go and you begin to praise him and you begin to worship him, he knows what to do. He knows which direction to go. By the time you see he has broken somebody's leg. <laughs> By the time you see somebody's in trouble somewhere. Hallelujah. And you will get up there, you want to go and pray for the person and God say, don't go. Seeing that I haven't sent you there. Amen. They looked towards the multitude and there were their, there were their dead body, bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped. When God moves on your behalf, no devil, no enemy will escape. How did it all happen? It happened through praises. As if that is not enough. Let's look at uh, 25. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry which were stripped off for themselves. Who goes to war with jewelry? These are some of the dangerous things God can do. He does wonders. I say what? God does wonders. Ah, we know that if you need jewelry, you have to go to the jewelry shop. You will go because maybe you don't have enough money to buy. Now you are collecting it free in the wilderness. At the battlefront, you are collecting jewelry. Hey! People are collecting jewelry on the battlefield. Who made that to happen? It's the same yesterday. Today and forevermore. I see somebody collecting jewelries. Eh? No, I'm not talking about copper, copper, or whatever. I'm talking about what? Gold and diamonds, pearls, expensive jewelry. It is coming. Somebody say it's coming. And precious jewelry, which they strip off for themselves, more than they could what? Go ahead. Could carry away, and they were they what? And they were three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. How did it all happen? The, the problem they knew about one problem that they wanted God to solve. God, this enemy, we are too. They are too strong for us. Make a way of escape for us. God says no. I will make a way of escape. The way you have praised me, the way you have worshipped me, now I want to kill. 
I want to destroy your enemies. He destroyed them. And that was not enough. He said, I'm going to bless you in addition. I'm going to give you what you did not ask for. Why? Because you have praised me. And three days, they were collecting. They left the battlefield rich. They left the battlefield, what? Rich, prosperous. They were coming from battlefield with jewelries in their leg. They couldn't carry it. More than that of Mr. T. They were coming with diamonds. They were coming with gold. They were coming with, they were coming with, you see. But they, they couldn't even carry it. So the devil tells you don't praise him. Say keep your mouth shut. If you praise him, he's going to bless you. So don't praise him. Don't, don't. So you come to church and praises is going on. <laughs> that will not be your portion. I said what? If you have understanding of praises, you will not keep your mouth shut. Whether you feel it or not, you praise him. David said, I praise him seven times a day. I go to the church house, the temple. Praise him. Then go home to his palace. And then another few hours, he goes back again to praise him. I'm sure some people will say that. Is David, David, you don't have any job to do. He had a job to do. His job was to praise God. Which of the kings of Israel ever prospered more than David? Who did God establish a covenant with? He said, David, my covenant with David is just like my covenant with the sun and the moon. Every day the moon will show up. That's a covenant between the moon and God. God said, if you can break my covenant with the moon and the sun, then you can break my covenant with David. It cannot be broken. What made the difference? The difference is not because of the school that David went or the connection or the contact, or the money that his parents had. The difference is that David had understanding of praising God at the backside of the desert. You see, some people will praise God when there is a testimony. Ah, I've broken through. Oh, we give, we give sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. It means that you have broken through. Right? We give him praise when there is promotion. But you praise him when there is also demotion. You praise him when it is well with you. And you praise him also when it is not well. Because when you praise him, he moves. Tonight I'm showing up with my dancing shoes. I will wear something that I can easily dance. Any kind of dancing you can think of. If I have to bend, then I can bend. Don't go wear some tight skirt and when you want to bend, then you're going like you're a clay. Go wear something that can cause you to bless God, praise God, dance as never before, praise him with understanding and see what God will do on your behalf. I see somebody already being blessed. I see somebody already being promoted. I see somebody already being elevated. I see the joy of the Lord reaching out to somebody. Let's rise up right now. Let's rise up and begin to praise him. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. He is a good God. Our God is a faithful God. He's a majestic God. He's a powerful God. He's an awesome God. A prayer answering God. The Bible says in his time, he does all things beautiful. Somebody shout beautiful. Say beautiful. Say my God is going to do beautiful things in my life, in my home, in the name of Jesus. Haraba
Shandaya. Let's do one serious praise and then we take our elevation offering. Whilst the praise is going on, let's just bring our elevation offering. 